guys, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be getting a little bit sad and emotional today because we are going to be talking about how to write heartbreak. We all have a little bit of a twisted thrill when it comes to hurting our characters. We have to break them in order to rebuild them and have them have the development and the character arc that we are so desperate for them to have. And that's kind of where the whole story comes from. And sometimes that involves heartbreak, be it a breakup or a loss or a betrayal. There are many different forms and therefore there are many different ways of writing it. So I have managed to narrow it down to five ways on how to write heartbreak. Number one, define what kind of heartbreak this is. As mentioned before, we have many different kinds, like the, the breakups, the losses, the grieving, the betrayals, the, you, you name it, the, the hopes and dreams that have been dashed, the you know, the, the way that we have been hoping to be accepted into that one university only to have our dreams crushed. The person that we're in love with only to find out that they're married to somebody else. To have the person that we have fallen in love with only for them to hurt us. Likewise, if we are in love with somebody else, sometimes we need to go through the heartbreak of ending things with them because mentally we are not okay and therefore not good for them. There are many different ways, so we need to define it. Certain kinds of heartbreak can be sudden and harsh and jarring, whereas others can be a slow burn that you have kind of seen coming for a long time, but there's just not, you know, the, the denial's taking over, so that slow burn creeping up is just a sense of dread sitting within you, so when something does actually happen, it just crushes you even more. Because once you've defined what kind of heartbreak you're working with, then you can figure out how to put it into words better. I cannot put words better into page or screen. I'm having a brain fart day, apparently. <laughs> but you can plan ahead once you've figured out what kind of heartbreak you're going for. If it's a slow burn one, you can plant little seeds here and there. That's going to make someone feel on edge. That's going to give the person, be it the character or the reader, a sense of dread that something bad is going to happen, that the hurts are going to arrive soon and you do not know why or how, but they're there and sometimes it can be a, you know, like I said, a jarring impact where it's just like, maybe it is loss. And if someone's, if someone has passed away from an illness, that could be your slow burn, seeds of doubt living in denial. Whereas if it's a person who's lost a family member from say a car accident, that is a jarring sudden thing that you can't mentally prepare for. And yeah, you need to have this in your head in order to plan, whether you need the seeds of doubt, whether you need to have little hints of what's going on here, whether you need the denial, or whether you need the crushing emotional impact of a sudden boom. <laughs> Number two, dealing with internal struggles. Now, internal struggles are going to be your best friend when it comes to writing heartbreak, because you deal with so much at once, and you never really know how to process it and your emotional side is battling with your logical side and then if you do have a history of mental illness in there then that's going to be playing a part you could try and do self-blame you could try and see things from the straight and narrow you could deal with the denial that you know suddenly reality is hitting you in the face but you've been telling yourself all along it's going to be okay it's going to be okay oh my god it's not okay internal struggles this, can, this is a good thing with any character arc, but especially when it comes to heartbreak, because there's so much going on in there. The character can fully understand, there is nothing I could have done here. This is, in, logically, there is nothing I could have done, this is just how things are, I need to deal with it now. But the emotional hurting side of them could just be creeping in there going, Oh my god, this is all my fault. Maybe if I'd done something different. Oh, but if I'd done this, then maybe this wouldn't have been happening. If maybe I had said this instead of that. If I'd gone here instead of gone there. Logically, there's nothing you could have done. Emotionally, everything's on you. <laughs> Sometimes self-blame and self-hurt can can hurt just as much as heartbreak itself and by, by being inflicted on by somebody else. Words, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes you can be your own worst enemy. That is what I was trying to get at. The cold, harsh reality clashing with the warm, inviting hope. 
you're always going to have some conflict there and it's always going to be good to explore in your writing. If you're dealing with a breakup from the person being dumped, it could be a sudden thing, but maybe because they're they just haven't noticed the clues. Breakups don't just happen on a whim. Was there a, a betrayal involved? Was there just a slow, niggling feeling of we're not good enough for each other anymore? We want different things. We're going in separate directions. From one person's perspective, they could have this entire thing lined up of why this relationship is no longer working, and that is why they're doing the dumping. Whereas the dumpy is more is sitting there like, no, everything's fine. No matter what's going to happen, we're going to fix it because we're fine. It's all good. And then once it actually happens, you are going over everything in your head and it could be a case of, no, they're in the wrong, everything was fine, they ruined everything, you're looking for someone to blame. But then when you actually sit down and start thinking about it, oh, actually, we did want different things. Well, there was that time when things just didn't seem right. Uh, he got the conflict. The way somebody lives their lives compared to what is actually happening in front of them, just... It, it gives them time to miss clues, to miss hints that a heartbreak is on the way because they are just so determined to keep things the way they are and when things do change, when things are out of, the, out of their control, it hurts. So take your character's logical side and emotional side and then have them battle it out in there. <laughs> Number three, take note of your character's personalities because their reactions and how they react to heartbreak um, and different kinds of heartbreak is going to be a defining moment. When something bad happens, are they the fixer kind of thing? Where it's like, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting, I, I, um, I'm, I'm so sad, I don't like this, I don't like this, what can I do to fix it? There's got to be something that I can do to fix this. Or maybe if I do this instead, then things will be okay. They need to find a solution, even if there really isn't one. They could be the blame type, where something horrible happens and they're just so angry that they need to find someone to blame, even if there isn't. Whether it's blaming themselves, blaming other people, it could just go round and round of I need to find someone to blame because stuff like this just doesn't happen when it does. They could be a recluse type, where they just have such a state of shock take over them that they can't respond to anybody, that they just need to be alone, whether it's for the best or not. Or do they just enjoy living in denial with like, everything's gonna be okay, everything's fine, everything is gonna be okay, because that's just what things do. They always end up being okay, so this has to be okay. You could, you got different ones in there, but you need to have a look at your character's personalities, because if you have this really, you know, outgoing, fun type, just suddenly being like, violent for no reason it's not going to make much sense you can have opposites in there opposites can be quite fun so if you have this really quiet reserved character that's really sweet and everything but then as soon as they're hurt as soon as they are betrayed they're just like i need to blame somebody how could you do this to me it's not my fault it's not my fault and you could likewise you could have this big bold leader type that just suddenly becomes this shut-in and doesn't want to see anybody you can have fun with opposites by all means, but you need to make sure that if that's the case, they need to have never felt this kind of heartbreak before in order for this reaction to shock them as well as those around them. Because that can be really fun to write, even if it does destroy characters, which again, can be quite fun to write, so yeah. <laughs> Are they a deep thinker so they're going to wallow in their own thoughts for so long? Are they very fast and living in the moment so they just want to get back to normal as fast as they can so they can try and deny everything that's happening around them? There's so many ways you could do it, but you need to look at your character's personalities, you need to see how they've reacted to other things in the past, maybe of a similar level, of a lower level, just to see how would you react to this kind of heartbreak. Again, going back to the different kinds of heartbreaks, so there's going to be a different kind of reaction for each one. That's just something you're going to have to mess around with to see what works. And it needs to make sense for your character and make sense for the situation in order for them to grow. Are they apathetic where they just don't care and things take a while to sink in? Are they the type where everything just hits them at once and they're in such a state of shock that they actually physically and mentally can't react for a while? I could go on, but you get the idea. What are your character's personality types? How do they respond to things like this? Have they responded to things like this in the past? And if you're going to have a reaction that seems out of character, that needs to be because they've never faced this kind of thing before and they've never felt this kind of emotional pain before. So it is shocking all around. Character personalities, pay attention to them. <laughs> Number four is such a cliche in itself, but it's a good cliche, so kind of needs to be said, 
and that is show, don't tell. <laughs> Your character is hurting. They are in a level of emotional pain that they didn't even imagine it was possible. They have maybe been stabbed in the back by someone who they thought was their closest friend. They could have lost the only family member that felt like they really knew them. They could have been abandoned by the love of their life. They could have been abandoned by their family. They could have just, you know, had all of their hopes and dreams for a better life in the new town just get completely ripped away from them. Again, the list goes on. But just telling somebody they're sad, they're angry, they're shocked, that isn't going to cut it. <laughs> if you want to have a deep emotional impact on the page and have the readers feel that same deep emotional impact, then you need to figure out your language. Because just telling them they're sad, they're angry, etc. just doesn't work because it feels flat, it feels bland, and it just kind of feels like... The entire heartbreak issue is getting overlooked and that's not what you want. You want this to be a defining character moment because it could be the thing that drives them to the rest of the plot or it could be the thing that completely crushes them and other people have to step in. This is a defining moment. Heartbreak is not something to be taken lightly so it shouldn't be taken lightly here. We need to see and feel every single bit of heartbreak that they're feeling. Instead of just saying they were sad, maybe they could feel their throat tightening and they didn't even realise that they were crying until the tears fell and landed on their lap. Maybe they're in such a state of shock that instead of just being they were shocked, they saw the words forming on so-and-so's mouth but couldn't hear the words. The world around them turned muffled, where they couldn't hear a thing. Just, they're so shocked that the world has turned to mush that they can't process what's happening. Are they so angry that they're feeling the blood bubble under their skin? Are they feeling the prickle at the back of their head? Are they feeling their body move without them to throw a punch or to point a finger? Things happen in an instant when it comes to reactions like this, so we need to show them, we don't need to tell them. <laughs> and finally, number five, healing. <laughs> healing does not happen in a page, healing is a slow burn process, healing is something that is going to be crucial to your character arc, because they could really overcome this and come back stronger, they could realise that they are a better person as they are now. They could realise that there are other options, they could realise that there is more to life, the list goes on. But at the same time, this could be the start of your villain, where they can't overcome, they can't overheal. If they can't overheal, they can't heal. Brain. <laughs> but if they can't heal in the typical sense, then they're going to heal in the darker sense, that they're going to shut themselves off and become this dark figure, whereas on the other end of the scale, they could heal and realise there's more to life and they can still carry on living. Healing, in both of its forms, is going to be another defining moment for your character. It's going to help complete this arc, but it doesn't happen just like that. It's also not going to be the same for every character, because there's, as we covered, there's so many different types of personalities, there's so many different types of heartbreak, that there's not going to be a single type of healing. The neighbour's dog is doing my head in lately. Good lord, the amount of times this dog has woken up the baby is... <laughs> happy neighbour, happy neighbour. But yes, healing. <laughs> so different types of heartbreak, different personalities, so therefore different types of healing. Is being in a crowd, being around friends, finding a new found family kind of thing, is that going to be their healing? Just being on their own and starting to realise who they are as a person without being in a group, is that their form of healing? Are they going to, you know, get all of this anger out and then realise that they've actually caused more pain than the pain that was inflicted on them? Is that how they're going to grow? There are so many different ways and it's so good because it's just the possibilities are endless so yes healing is good <laughs> but you do have to have an arc for the healing in itself so you need to have the starting point of the healing you're going to need to think ahead on what little defining moments are going to plant more seeds of hope in them what what, what do they want how are they going to get it and how is it going to help them further down the line 
healing. <laughs> also, you could just openly say that there is no healing and it's not going to result in a villain arc. It could be that this is the be-all and end-all for this character, that they feel like they cannot go on, that there is nothing beyond it, and healing is just impossible. It's dark and it's grim and it's the end of your character, but it does happen on rare extreme circumstances. They just feel like they can't go on and there is no healing. It still falls under the healing category because it's something you need to consider, but Oof, good lord, you, you better be ready to say goodbye to that character if that's the case, and if you are saying goodbye to that character, that needs to have an impact on the remaining ones, so keep that in mind. <laughs> so that is all I have for you today when it comes to writing heartbreak. You need to define the heartbreak, define the personalities, define the reactions, show don't tell, and focus on the different kinds of healing, because the, 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 way, the tangents that we could go on, I just banged my elbow. <laughs> The tangents I could go on are insane, so I'm going to end this here, but I hope this has helped in some way. And if you are going through any heartbreak, that personally, then I really do hope that you reach out and find the help that you need in order to heal. And hey, if you want to chat, then by all means, send a message. I am not a therapist, I am not a doctor, but if you just need to vent, then by all means go for it. I'll listen. <laughs> But yep, until then, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, my scribblers.